A shocking revelation tonight. CNN has learned that North Korea audaciously billed the United States for the care of an American student who suspiciously fell into a coma while in North Korean custody and later died. CNN's Brian Todd has got details for us. Uh, Brian, this came to light as Kim Jong-un was having his first meeting with Russian President Putin. That's right, Wolf. As Kim Jong-un seemed to signal the United States by flaunting those connections he now has with Vladimir Putin, we learned of that very defiant demand Kim had made of the Trump administration, and we spoke to the American envoy who received that bill. It was a brazen demand from Kim Jong-un's regime in North Korea to the Trump administration. Sources say a $2 million bill to the U.S. for the hospital care of comatose American student Otto Warmbier. Sources tell CNN the North Koreans insisted that the U.S. sign a pledge to pay the bill before they release the 22-year-old from their custody in 2017. Sources say the bill was presented to U.S. envoy Joseph Yoon, who was sent to North Korea to win the release of the University of Virginia student and that Yoon signed a pledge to pay it. Tonight, Yoon isn't commenting on whether he signed the pledge, but tells CNN he had strict orders from the Secretary of State and the President. It was clearly understood by me, and Rex Tillerson indeed tell me, get him out. And were those orders from President Trump? I believe they were, yes. The doctor who traveled with Yoon to Pyongyang told the Washington Post he examined Warmbier in an intensive care unit there, that he thought North Korean doctors had done state-of-the-art resuscitation to try to revive Warmbier, and that he was surprised Yoon had to negotiate for Warmbier's release. Yoon would only tell us the negotiations were delicate, and he had no guarantee from the North Koreans when he arrived that he'd be able to leave with Warmbier. In the end, you know, it was a lot of back and forth on that type of arguments I made. Their, point, their, their, their argument was that he was a criminal and that, you know, why would they let out a criminal uh, for no particular reason? I told them then that he was sick. He needed to be taken care of by his parents. Warmbier, who was sentenced to jail for tearing down a propaganda poster in his hotel, died from brain damage shortly after he was brought back to Ohio. What caused his injuries remains unclear. The North Koreans said he contracted botulism. Warmbier's parents said he was tortured but refused an autopsy. Tonight, Warmbier's father tells the Washington Post the $2 million demand sounds like, quote, ransom. Otto Warmbier died at the hands of the Kim regime. This is the ultimate cruelty being perpetrated onto the Warmbier family and the people of the United States, I would say. The U.S. has not yet paid that bill, a source tells CNN, but North Korea could still demand it, adding another wrinkle to Donald Trump's already complicated negotiations. Those talks hit a standstill after a failed February summit in Hanoi with Kim. Instead, North Korea's leader today was turning to Russian President Vladimir Putin during a summit in Vladivostok. The two leaders exchanged swords as gifts and talked for three and a half hours on topics including denuclearization. Chairman Kim Jong-un is quite an open person and speaks freely. We had a very detailed conversation. Some experts say Kim's meeting with Putin is a sign that Kim's personal relationship with Trump is in trouble and Kim could be looking elsewhere for partners. Analysts say Kim could be trying to put pressure on President Trump to make concessions and even get under Trump's skin. He likes to be center stage. We all know that. And to have Putin take back center stage from him is something that it, it, it will aggravate the hell out of him. Neither the White House nor the State Department would comment on the North Koreans' $2 million bill for Otto Warmbier's care. And we have this just in from the North Korean news agency quoting Kim Jong-un or citing him as saying that the situation on the Korean peninsula is at a standstill at a critical point where it may return to its original state. And according to this, Kim said the U.S. took a unilateral attitude in bad faith at the summit in Hanoi, Wolf. So we're at a very kind of tricky diplomatic point tonight as Kim kind of weighs in again on the summit in Hanoi, saying the U.S. acted in bad faith. Yeah, tense situation indeed. Brian Todd reporting for us. Thank you.